With me is a chess expert, Mr. Leon Chogasia. Leon Chogasia is, is in the Caribbean and shortly will be making a visit to Grenada. Chess is becoming a very big sport in the Caribbean. And Mr. Garcia will be explaining to us the mission, his mission in the Caribbean and later to Grenada. Welcome, Mr. Garcia. Thank you, Michael, for having me. Thank you. Okay, and let's talk about chess in particular. Let's start off by chess, the sport of chess. Uh, and, and we say chess because we're speaking about chess, the educational sport. Um, what can you tell us about chess for someone who is hearing about chess or heard about chess and wants to know a little more about the plane of chess? Well, there we have um, solid scientific evidence and long international experiences to say that those children who are playing chess or even better, who are trained uh, using chess as an educational tool by their school teachers, are improving their intelligence uh, more than others. I mean, developing their intelligence, including the emotional intelligence, which is very important today. And they are also getting better rates in general, but specifically in maths and reading. Uh, besides of that, my own experience uh, says that well, after training more than 30,000 school teachers in about 30 different countries, the level of satisfaction among school teachers who are using chess as an educational tool is over 80% in primary school and over 90% in preschool. I mean, from two to five year old children. This is extremely high when we are talking about any project on innovative education and and, and and it seems as if um more and more people are getting involved uh in the playing of chess why do you think it's been a becoming a very attractive sport now well right now chess is in fashion all over the world <laughs> right for two right. reasons the lockdown I mean, chess is the only sport you can play through the internet. So during the lockdown, a lot of people uh, in many different countries started to play chess. And secondly, the big success, the big popularity of the series Queen's Gambit by in, in, in Netflix. This is one of the most popular series in the history of Netflix. But besides of that, there is a very solid base, as I said, we are not talking about just any other activity. We are talking about a, an activity which is supported by solid scientific evidence. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we've seen that, um, the, as you said, uh, even the school children, you know, it's becoming a bit very popular among school children. And we have, you, speaking about scientific evidence, it has also shown that um, it helps in stimulating, as they say, stimulating the brain, stimulating knowledge, things like that. Why do you think it's important for uh, parents to get their young kids involved in chess at a very early age? Well, there is a very old principle, learning by playing and playing by learning. When the children think that they are just playing, but actually they are learning very important things by playing, this kind of um, teaching is especially effective. So parents normally become uh, very happy about that because they see, just to, to mention one skill that is very much uh, developed through chess, which is concentration they see that their kids are able to be much more concentrated. In nowadays, this is very important. I mean, with the social networks and this kind of very fast world where we are living, to have the skill to be very concentrated or concentrate on what you are doing is really very important. Flexible thinking is another very important skill which is developed by chess. The world has changed in the last 25 years 
as much as, or even more than in any other 25 year period in the history of humankind. And it's going to change even more in the next 25 years. So the, your capacity to adapt yourself to a reality which is changing very fast is one of the most important skills today at the 21st century. When the parents see uh, all that with their children, of course, they become very happy about chess as an educational tool. Mm -hmm. And not just educational tool, it's a very cheap sport to play as well. It's very cheap compared to others, right? Exactly. Suppose that you want to promote uh, music uh, as an educational tool. Of course, I agree that music is also a very powerful uh, educational tool, but it is much more expensive than chess because you need to buy the musical instruments and so on. Uh, a chess board, a chess pieces set is very cheap. It's a universal game. The World Chess Federation has right now 199 countries affiliated. Grenada is one of the last ones coming into the FIDE, the World Chess Federation. So chess is really universal. You can play chess wherever you are going in, in the world. And it's also very equalitarian. I mean, when, when playing chess, everybody is equal. You can be poor or rich. You can be white or black. You can be very old or very young. You can be men or women, but everybody is the same when playing chess. Mm -hmm. As they say, sometimes it's a, a meeting of the minds, okay, with chess. So tell me what it is you plan to do on visiting Grenada. What is your plan when you visit Grenada? Normally, my strategy is, first of all, what I call breaking the ice. Breaking the ice means destroying some very extended wrong ideas about chess, especially one which says chess is very interesting but very complicated only for very intelligent people. As I am not very intelligent, then chess is not for me. Well, this is a big mistake because this is like comparing somebody who likes running and somebody who is a marathon professional. Both of them are running, yes, but there is no connection between what they are doing. I mean, in order to be a chess grandmaster, a big player, a professional, you have to be born with some genetic skills, and then you have to train very hard for many years. But if you want just to play chess as a pastime, you only need a couple of hours to learn the basic rules and if you want if you are um, a school teacher and you want to use it as an educational tool the the workshops i'm giving are about 10 12 hours and after that a professional school teacher is able adding it's uh, he or, or her, her or his own creativity professional knowledge and so on they are able already to start using chess as, a, as an educational tool. So my first target in Granada is breaking the ice. And the second one will be proposing, for instance, a pilot experience, starting with a workshop and, and so on. I mean, creating a positive opinion about chess, not only as a sport, but also or mainly as an educational tool. Mm -hmm. I know you're already in the region, that's in the Caribbean. What sort of feedback have you been getting um, in terms of the uh, chess and chess federation and um, affiliations to the chess um, world body? I'm very, very positive, very happy, very satisfied because three months ago, I had a meeting with the Minister of Education in Panama and Minister of Education in Cuba. Both, both countries are already organizing the workshop for November. They are convinced. Now, in these last weeks, I started in Colombia, Caribbean Colombia, in Barranquilla. The uh, minister, the secretary of education there is also very convinced. They are also planning how to develop the, the plan, the workshops and so on. 
Yesterday, I had a meeting with the Minister of Education in Puerto Rico. He is also very interested. And just a few hours ago, I am now in Dominica. I had uh, three meetings and one interview with uh, a radio station. Uh, the four of them went very well. Also, the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Sports, the school teachers, all of them are very interested. So I cannot be happy. <laughs> and a, a bit about yourself. Um, seeing that you're a chess lecturer, you also a writer, presenter, commentator, and a journalist yourself. And um, looking further, it says you awarded the European Chess Union as a best chess journalist. So chess as a sport itself, um, how easy it is to do commentary for chess play? Well, <laughs> that's a very good question. I have been doing that for the last 39 years. And very often, some people are, I mean, non-chess players, are asking me, how can you be able to be commenting a tournament live for, for five hours in a row <laughs> during two weeks, for instance, without repeating yourself, I mean, saying the same things every day. Well, the answer is that is much easier than <coughs> it looks like, because chess has very interesting connections with different branches of uh, human knowledge, <coughs> sorry, like um, artificial intelligence, education, psychology, psychiatry, neurology, history, more than uh, 15 centuries of documented history. Can you imagine, Michael, how many interesting things happened in more than 15 centuries? How many hundreds of interesting characters are included in 15 centuries? Mm -hmm. Yeah, quite impressive indeed. And um, over your period of, what, um, almost four decades, you know, um, Tell me a bit how many countries you have visited, chess-related, um, lectures, t um, people you have taught. I, 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 I understood you, you work along with um, Gary Kasparov, um, a former chess master himself. Yes. Um, I have visited about 100 countries. I have to count because maybe Grenada could be the hundredth one. I don't know. I have to, to make the concrete uh, account. Um, well, I have interviewed all world champions since the middle of the last century. I mean, uh, I started to work as a journalist in 1983, which means that the world champions in the 50s and 60s were uh, still alive. So I had the opportunity to interview practically all of them. And, well, for me, chess is, a, as, I, as I said before, is a way to know a little bit about many interesting fields of uh, human knowledge. And I also feel that I am contributing a little bit to a high quality education of millions of children in many different countries. I think that is one of the most rewarding things you can do in life. Mm -hmm. But I'm certain the Chess Federation in Grenada, the folks there are looking forward to your visit, and I'm certain that you will enjoy yourself. Um, first time visiting Grenada, so uh, I assume, and um, certainly um, a lot, I, I can say that even without them <laughs> telling me that, lots in store for you to visit, and I'm certain it would not be your first, it would not be your last either. Looking forward to your visit to Grenada. Thank you. I have been told about Grenada being one of the most beautiful countries in the world. So yeah. I am willing to, to arrive there. Yes. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Thank you very much, Mr. Garcia. And I'm hoping for all the best and for a successful trip to Grenada. Thank you, Michael. See you soon. Thank you. Okay, then. Take care. Thank